But Hushai, not not Saj. Uh, Hushai is actually uh, a cousin of uh, Ukers. Uh, and he's treated relatively well because he's believed to be, like, the next Uker up and coming. Look at the size of that motherfucker's traps! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> he carries his groceries home. He's from the same, <laughs> he's from the same family, but he's lived, he's lived in the city longer, like, his family's lived in the city much longer than Uker's. Uh, which means he's kind of smaller. Like, he's compact, but he's not as, nope. he's not as grand as, as Uker's. Let me just get rid of him. The snowman. Uh, where did Uker go? There we go. He's way off the I've side. been in North. Um, he is not necessarily your water boy for or servant, but he he does get positioned with you lots because they hope that he's going to learn from you. Is really is the really the way it goes. The um, goal is not get knocked down. <laughs> your. Uh, Whipping boy. His name is Anibish. Anibish is from the. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to use the original token. There's a reason why. Uh, uh, and <laughs> the the original token that we were going to use actually was from some um, from some police station. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use the victim's photo <laughs> for for a guy who got beat up. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> it was um, place boulder. <laughs> okay. All right. So so. Uh, an Anibish is a warrior, uh, is, is, like, he would be more of, like, a servant warrior. He may not ever be a great, uh, uh, Bokan wrestler, but he's, he originally tried to train to become a Bokan wrestler, and it ended up filling one of the many roles of, of, like, water boy, servant, uh, helps with the training, that sort of thing. He is not a Kunian, uh, uh, blood. He is not from the, the, originally the Jade Empire, and their people were called, um, Mm, where did I put that? Uh, Yuguo. Uh, he's not Yuguo. He's not a Kunian. He is uh, from the Ivory Kingdoms. Um, and they are called the Avesh. So he's Aveshi. <sighs> Swarthy in skin. Uh, he's smaller than smaller than Uker. Uh, but he but he but he loves the sport. Um, so he's part of the stable, but he's not part of the not not a, necessarily a fighter. Then who else do we have? We have your your Zazel. So there is an interesting um, there's an interesting mesh between Ikunian and um, Jade Empire wrestling. Jade Empire wrestling would be the closest thing to sumo. Ikun, uh, Ikunian wrestling would be akin to Mongolian wrestling. And after two hundred years of like of a mixture of cultures basically the Bakun wrestling is the the most traditional and and um above board of the sports and part of the sport involves at the beginning of the match basically bards and entertainers entertain the crowd and introduce the wrestler before he enters the uh enters the the large uh ring it's not like a wwe ring that's it's more of like a big open circle uh in the middle of the um in the middle of the place where the competitions are held. So, this man, Zazel Zhu, um, enjoys his costumes and, uh, and his, uh, in his makeups and that sort of thing, and he's the guy who was assigned, or will be assigned once you become a wrestler, uh, to, uh, to act as your introducer, also called Zazel. Zazel is, uh, uh, the title. So here are a few people, um, on your on your day of graduation let me describe what goes on on the day of graduation i'm assuming at this point i haven't learned about the juice yet the what alchemist power uh you have you have been trained oh. so you, you i have been training okay so i've learned about performance enhancements yes mm -hmm. <laughs> On graduation day, the young warriors arose as they did any of any other day. During their training, they were tested. Stances and counters, footing and form, all second nature by now. The tests include basic tests of strength, lifting and pulling, pushing and throwing. These tests were the bare minimums, and Uker beat these months and years before. All in all, these tests were no more than just a ceremonial thing. It was training and perseverance of all people part of his class that got them this far. 
Master Yogai, the Mountain Mason, as he was called when he was um, uh, when he was actually wrestling. Um, he's very prideful of his one quarter Ikunian heritage. Master Yogai overlooked the organized spectacle of the of the graduation day with great pride. At the end of the session, he handed out the stone sash to each of his brave new Bakari wrestlers. Everyone passed the test because any of those who would have flunked out did so months or years ago. This was kind of like a, a more ceremonial thing. You've already met the minimum bars. Like, Uker spent the rest of his time moving around bigger stuff than they would ever get him to train for to meet the min bar. Yeah. Uh, it's a masterwork silk sash that contains three pockets. Um, ceremonially, you tend, uh, you're supposed to carry salt, water, and rice or grain in each of the three pockets. In attendance at the ceremony was uh, Zazul Zhu, the dragon of the mountain. He dresses up in this big scary costume. There's Anibish, water, Uker's <laughs> water, water whipping boy servant. Basically, Anibish basically gets everything set up and ready for Uker. Uh, is the towel boy. Um, presses his clothes for him. You know, like he's he does everything. <laughs> who shall uh, uh, who shall not sodge Uker's younger cousin? Uh, hopes uh, the masters hope he'll become Uker's protege. He isn't actually he hasn't actually graduated yet. They crowd around in excitement, and know that there will be a celebration tonight at the Palace of Eternal Earthly Delights, a raucous and local drinking and eating house. Sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, yes. Well, I must say, says Azul, you did wonderful today, but there was no, there was absolutely no doubt, no doubt whatsoever. Do you like the red? Mm. Brings out your eyes. Uh, for the red god Tengri, of course, he says with a smile. <laughs> This was Zazul, Zazul Zoo, your, your bard who likes to dress up in, in like, uh, Jade Empire opera costumes and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, Anibish, uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> who created Anibish? No, he doesn't, he, he doesn't speak, he just does. And then sits quietly in the corner until told to do something else. Awesome role playing, Mark. <laughs> yes, my character who doesn't have to have a voice or listen to anyone. <laughs> All right, and then who created who who shy or who shall? I forget what the uh, who shy. Oh, I did that one too. You, you created him too. Mark went crazy on the character creation on this one. Yeah, I, I yeah. won the first little bit, and then the last I, I didn't. Uh. So Mark did the first little bit of character creation, then the last little bit of character creation, and, it, and, it's and in the middle... And it's who shall, if it matters. Who shall? Yeah. Who shall. Alright, who wants to take who shall? What, what are who shall's words of congratulations, Duker, as he celebra as he passes his graduation? Damn. Nothing. He hates Go on, Ed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, Go on, Ed. Take it. Stairs, death, 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 death daggers. <laughs> Where is... Uh... Uh, I'm sorry. What, up I and coming see. wrestler. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the guy that's following him? This is Uka's younger cousin. Who the next, younger cousin who's who next uh, year looking will up to undergo him. the same ceremony. Okay. Uh, how old is he? Age 17. How is... So proud of you! That's amazing. You've been, you've accomplished this. Well, not really. You've accomplished it when you were like twelve, I think. But you... yay! <laughs> Go, will... Uker! Shh! Go! You will be here accent. soon. Hey. One more season, maybe two. Thank you. Thank you. And right. Ibish comes back with the, with with the water. It was only a matter of time, of course. <laughs> he hands it to you without looking you in the eye, lest you decide to kick him. <laughs> I'm not going to kick him. But the, the, the best the, one here. Yeah. Have, have, have you been Have you been a kind young master to the uh, to the, the to the servant? You actually didn't become his master until the graduation ceremony. Like you are now oh. officially a wrestler of the the Stonehouse of Wrestling. And 
you are now considered basically a man. You could face right. like the most gargantuan people tomorrow in, in, in the ring. You know, <laughs> oh, <it's him. laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> right in the junk, right there. I, no, he's nice to a Nebish. Why would he? Be, but he's not like he, he's not skilled, but he can take a beating. <laughs> <laughs> You just had fun building a con build, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you, Anibish has been essential yeah, yeah. to your training because he's just tough as nails. Yeah. Like, he just kind of, yeah. he'll get knocked down and get right back up, and he's yeah. like, like right there. <laughs> you, put, you, you put him in the big padded suit, you smash him against the wall repeatedly. <laughs> so just good one, up again. One more time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, your your friends are all very excited for a night of drinking at the Palace of Eternal Earthly Delights. All right, I've I saved. We're splurging. We're going. We're going Chinese style. I'm paying for the night out because it's my night out. So that's just how it works. Okay. They they agree. They'll they'll um um. So normally, Uker after training goes to the noodle uh goes to Noodleman's uh to break his fast. Um, apparently, eating before you train is a bad thing because you don't put on weight that way. Uh, eating after you train, basically, uh, Anibish also has been uh, has been the the un unceremonious job of feeding Uker until he can't eat anymore, and then feeding him some more. Basically, <laughs> like, no, like eating yep. is a thing where that you need to put in calories in order to gain weight, in order to gain strength and size. So, yep. you know that Uker is is good on his own. Sometimes he doesn't eat enough. And when I'm saying like like the 350 pound man doesn't eat enough, like like sometimes he'll stop eating when he's full, but he's not supposed <laughs> to do that. So you've you've got the, you've got the job to make sure. Uh, Noodleman's uh, is the place where he tends to go. Uh, and, and in hey, fact, if three he... more plates now, he looks almost full. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> However, Uker, today you know that um, it's uh, one of the holy days of the week. And you're running late for Ik, uh, Ik Imi's sermons. You, you, can, you can go. To, you can go so, to Noodleman's afterwards. It'll just, I know, it'll I know. just mean a. It'll, later. it'll mean a. It'll mean a shorter nap, basically. Church now, food later. <laughs> Temple, let's go. Okay, is anyone going with Uker to Ik Imi's uh, sermons? Yeah, I'll go. Um, uh, Nibish will clean up at the after the ceremony and meet him at Noodleman's. Okay. Who shall to, also to come ensure in? proper nutrition? <laughs> I have to get ready for this evening, says says Zul. Uh, says Zu. So Zu Zu wanders off. May I come with you? Mm. Yes. Come, cousin. Yes. Okay. The two cousins go off to see Ikimi. Ik Imi means great grandmother in the Akunian language. She is a venerable old woman that knows a thousand stories, rituals, and prayers of the shamanic traditions, ancestor worship, and pantheons of many pantheons of gods. She is cared for, and tended to, and protected by a host of servants, shamans, and monks. Once a week, her old bones are carted before the theater of a thousand banners to speak before people. To prattle on in wise words, answer questions, perform blessings, and sometimes even miracles. Both nobles and common folk are allowed into the sessions, with an area dedicated to each. Every word she utters and every movement is recorded, and three copies are made. One is sent to the great Khan himself. Basically, he gets a report from every week's sermons from Ikimi. Yep. Another to the public temple for reading by priests, and the last to the archives for safekeeping. Usha, if you uh, don't pass your tests, you can carry her around. <laughs> be a guard. I think it's, it's a good better position. honor. I will. Yes. <laughs> he like loves you. you. You'll pass. You'll pass. Okay. Yes, with your guidance, I will. Hi. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, so there's, there's it's really dedicated, man. Really dedicated. There's Ik Imi. She's at the front. She's at the front, um, and you're almost late. Uh, yes, okay. she has a grown. She has a horn growing out of the side of her head. It's seen as the source of her blessing uh, and a power of uh, or curse to um, uh, uh, to see the future. Don't mess with the tumor. Um, 
sitting in front of you, and like there's this row that is that is set up at the back for all of the um, you know three to six hundred pound men from the <laughs> the Balkan fighting houses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can't squeeze into the smaller seats for, uh, dedicated yeah. for, for normal people. But there is a um, uh, there is a woman from the Jade Empire. She's of a different uh, human stock than Uker is. She's not Ukrainian. Uh, again, this word is not rolling off of my tongue. It is the, uh, the Yugo, people of the Jade Empire, or people Yugo. of the Jade. Yeah. Yeah, Yugo. Yugo. Um, she's a Yugo aristocrat. Uh, you know her name um, because... She's important around these parts. Her name, her name is Lady uh, Wu Fang, and she give me a sense motive. Uh, do I? Huh. <laughs> this is one of those things I learned to do eventually. Maybe. <laughs> She's Twitter. friendly uh, and likes roll you. a nineteen. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Nine, sorry, and I twenty. I rolled a nineteen. I get twenty. Okay. She gives Uker an OU sort of look sneer. Um, hmm. She doesn't like Ukunians, apparently. She doesn't like you in particular for some reason. She mutters under her breath how they mock me by putting me near the barn. She made a barn stable joke. Yep. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> uh, Uker is going to try to, when she's not looking, make a horse impersonation. <laughs> 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 He's been uh, snorting like a horse once in a while, just randomly. <laughs> she, she seems to be, like, she's, she puts her chin high and is listening to Ikimi. And is 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 not looking back towards all of you. She does turn a different shade. <laughs> like she, <laughs> livid. She's like, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> As you'll realize later, hell hath no fury. Um, I mean, Icky me is having a bit of a fidgety day. Uh, apparently, there's a false start to her prayer, and there's lots of monks and things tending to her, and everyone's kind of like uh, murmuring a little bit. Uh, there are some that turn you turn around, and like when you start making noises, there are others in the noble gallery that turn around and like give you bad looks. What, what's funny is that the nobles of the Yuguo have been placed kind of in like like the cheap seats with the sumo bakun wrestlers behind them. Like this is yep. not a prominent place. All the, no. all of the Ikunian nobles are, are front and center, and like priests, and then even some of the common folk of the empire are sitting closer than the Yugo, the Yugo uh, aristocrats. They do have a reason, to uh, they do have a reason to, um, to be a little bit angry. Uh, Uker is not doesn't have an eye for politics, and he thinks them. Being annoyed at him is funny, so okay. he's not ashamed, and he's not one of those like, oh, I might have offended someone by whatever. No, it, he doesn't give a fuck. Icky me finally starts going. She she finally starts, and there there are scribes and murmurs to the crowd. Today, for whatever reason, she starts prattling on about the old white man, or the white old man. Uh, in Ikunian, it's uh, Tasagan Abugan. He lived on an old mountain. Above him, the heavens, as sovereign lord. Beneath him, the earth mother, as sovereign lady. She smacks her old woman lips, teethless. Master of all beasts and men, protective spirits. He faced many evils and defeated many demons. On the mountains, he is lord of the mountain lands. On the steppes, he is lord of the farmlands and the waters. Amongst men, he is the lord of the earth, its houses and their waters. In the monasteries, he is the lord of religious domain and its waters. 